All right, so I got the new 14.2 full self-driving software with the latest update, which I believe is out to 50% of tes Teslas now, not more. Got some good stuff here, but let's go over some of the stuff in the menu real quick. Something that's new is autopilot drive stats. This only shows your autopilot driving, your full self-driving since you've installed this update, unfortunately, so it doesn't show historical. But you can see right now, I'm at 37.8 miles, 93% on self-driving. Uh, here you can set your default speed profile, which is nice. I don't think there's any other changes down below. And another new thing is if you go to Toy Box, you can do Tron Aries mode, similar to Christmas mode, a little different. Turn that down. So apparently it preloads the new Nine Inch Nails uh, Tron Aries soundtrack album. Starts playing and I believe the horn and turn signals also sound different. Let's see. Not sure about the horn. I don't think the horn changed last time. Let's see what happens. I don't know. I think I heard a little whoop whoop or something. All right, and then we'll get to driving. All right, and now we're gonna drive home. We'll leave Tron mode engaged to show some of the visuals. Um, yeah, let's go. I mean, I'm gonna start from this parking spot. Turn the wheel. Woo! It's going quick towards that car. One thing I have noticed, and I think this is just how Tesla does it right now, is they they do a lot more like like uh, they don't go back as far. Like when I'm backing out of a spot, I'm already turning, or if I'm backing out of my driveway, I'm backing out as far as possible before I go forward. The Tesla software in general seems to want to back out only halfway, and it seems to want to control most of the driving forward, which I guess makes sense, but I like that. That easily could have been a single back up and go versus um, backing up, going forward, backing up a little more. That's a nitpick, and that's not for version 14 specific. That's just Tesla thing. All right, so we look. We see we have the Tron light cycle. Uh, still showing and I don't know a way to cancel it or even activate it by voice like the Santa mode so we you go in a toy box and turn it off maybe we have to say let's ride I should give that a shot in a minute let's ride nah that didn't work alright so the only way to turn on the Tron Aries mode, if that's the thing you're interested in, you can't do it while you're driving. You have to do it um, when you're parked, and I think that's because it lifts the seat up and it turns off and it does the black screen and everything, which you can't do while driving. All right, so I've had 14.2 for a few days now, and so far I am extremely impressed. Definitely so much smoother. The leaf braking, if you've been following anyone that does full self-driving videos in 14.1, uh, there was an issue, which was really bad right now because it's fall and the leaves are falling constantly, where the Tesla would just hit the brakes hard for the any leaf crossing the road, and it was is very problematic in a lot of cases. That is almost completely gone, if not completely gone. Although I did have an interesting thing um, earlier today. I was driving with my son. And a small leaf vortex tornado thing happened in the road. And the Tesla came to a screeching stalt, um, halt. And it even applied emergency braking uh, as I tried to gas through it. So I didn't have the camera going, but I will put up the uh, dash cam footage that I saved from that incident. So outside of that... 
It actually handles the leaves very well. It, however, was not prepared to handle a small leaf tornado, and it freaked out. What else have I noticed? Oh, I've got some other dash cam footage, again, since I've had the software for a few days now, and I'm only now able to video record. Uh, I had one other um, great navigation uh, challenge for the Tesla, and I'll, I'll put up the dash cam in a moment. Let me explain it first. So I was leaving, um, I was turning off of my street onto another street, and there was a car block, uh, so it's like a T intersection that you'll see in the video, and it's kind of a narrower road, still it's kind of a two-lane unlined road. Um, hold on. <laughs> the Tesla keeps thinking it should go in that lane. That lane ends, and it's not the lane I want. So I'm glad it's not going there, but we'll see if it tries. All right, so there's this T-intersection, and there was just a car stopped at the stop sign. And not only that, it was some workman going through their van, and they had the driver door open. So there was so little room left. And the Tesla on 14.2 did a very great job of going around the truck. Now, it did have to impede the oncoming lane, but anyone, I mean, that, that was just unavoidable. And then it, it proceeded out to the intersection, and it just did it very smoothly, very well, exactly the way I would have done it. It was very impressive. I will show that footage now. One other th thing I've noticed is that using the hurry driving profile, uh, before hurry would always try and go over into the left lanes. And I find that in 14.2, even though I'm in the hurry profile, it'll stay in the right lane for a lot longer if I have an exit or a turn coming up. That was one of my biggest complaints with all previous versions was that, look, if I have a turn coming up in a half a mile or less, I don't always want to be going over to the left lanes because then I have to make a last minute merge to the right and that's not always you know courteous to other drivers so I've been very impressed that 14.2 even in hurry mode it it can ride in the right lane and it'll um, it'll even go plenty fast in the right lane and it tends to only move if the traffic in front of it is going slower so that's actually a change I appreciate it's essentially the older version. If you remember version 12, there was the minimized lane changes option. I feel like that's kind of baked in now, which I definitely appreciate. So that's one thing I've noticed um, in the short time I've been with 14.2. It seems very prevalent and very welcome. This I wanted to go around. Let's see how quickly it'll. Not sure. That was interesting. So one thing I have noticed, I don't think it's particular to 14.2. Um, seen it in a number of versions, but it seems a little bit stronger in this one. Is that it, it definitely prioritizes in a way. What is that? Look at that. explain that in a second definitely prioritizes mimicking the driver in front of you which sometimes is good because it can get useful context for what's happening but in some cases bad that guy was a distracted driver I looked at him he was fiddling with something on his phone and he was going like 10 under the speed limit 
Now, I disengaged because the Tesla was trying to make a lane change and it was very indecisive. And it went so far as to cross the left tires over the line and then it felt like it was pulling back and I wanted it to make that lane change. So that's why I took over. Um, which again, there are still disengagements. That one was not a safety disengagement. That was just more of my preference. I don't like it when the Tesla is kind of waffling on what to do. And also what it was doing is it was kind of following that guy's lead and he was going 10 out of the speed limit and hugging the right uh, line in a merge lane because he wasn't paying attention. So in that particular case, the Tesla was taking context clues from a bad driver and it wasn't acting the best. So I do think I find that that's the times, just like what you just saw, where I have to disengage the most now, or where I have the most, what I call preferential disengagements, not for safety. But sometimes it seems to imitate what someone else is doing in a bad way. And then I'm like, no, let's just do what we need to do. So like, again, I'm torn on that. I think it's great because drivers ahead of you can give great context. Just as a human driver, if I see people hitting their brakes, okay, something's probably happening. If people are going, you know, if a line of cars is going 10 out of the speed limit, probably something's happening at slowing down traffic, and you can get a feel for what's going on ahead. However, if you're not paying attention, you can imitate just a bad driver, and I, I definitely think it's what we're seeing. Tell you though, I didn't expect to have a disengagement uh, in a 14.2 video, but I think that one called for it. So while I'll say, trust me, it's really great. Very smooth driver, does excellent. Sometimes it still does some silly stuff. And I'm not one of those people, it's like, I'm going to let it do whatever it wants and never touch the wheel. If I feel like the car is being indecisive or it's demonstrating qualities that would, you know, you would think would be like a discourteous driver, I don't want to do that. I'm not trying to irritate people around me. So I'll take over. That's probably why my FSD percentage is, what is it? 92, 93% on average. Some people I think have 95 to 99% already I'm gonna hang probably closer to those low 90s because I take over probably a little more frequently than other full self-driving users because I just don't want the car to be a jerk <laughs> sometimes I gotta take over to do that let's see is it gonna go yes I waffled for a moment but fortunately I didn't have to gas it. Yeah, definitely has no problems with the little leaves in the road. It was much improved. been following my channel for a while maybe since the beginning you'll know remember I used to say that the speed homes in my neighborhood were the bane of my existence and would probably be featured in nearly all of my videos I will say since version 14 at you know just even 14 one no issues with the speed humps it sees them all the time in every condition definitely 100% improvement in how it handles these 
impressive. Kind of thought they would plague me forever. I don't know why it's always put on the right turn signal here. The, I mean, the, the street just goes around. There's never a need for a right turn signal. It's done that since version 12. Still doing it 14.2. It's not necessary, but it's not really a problem either. It does seem to even hit the speed bumps at a lower speed than before. I think version 13, uh, it would go anywhere from like 11 to 15 miles per hour over those. It seems to get into the single digits now uh, before it goes over them, which is great as well. A little less bumpy. Well, notice here, if you can see it in the video, it actually says driveway. Um, so we're approaching my home and, you know, but even before it used to say just parking lot or curb, now it actually will say driveway if it's a residence. Uh, it parks weirdly. Sometimes it pulls in right behind my other car. Once it's pulled in and around my other car, which is how I na normally park. And then sometimes it'll back in. And let's just see what it does today. It's, in the side. it's trying to see if it wants to go over there. Okay, and there, we're done driving. I'll move the car. But yeah, overall 14.2 is a very great improvement over 14.1. Takes out a lot of the jerkiness. Very smooth ride. Um, as you see, not perfect. Some waffling still occurs. Um, someone like me, I'm going to disengage periodically. But even though in this short drive we had one incident like that, the majority of my driving that I've done so far has been extremely smooth. So that's about 40, 44 miles on 14.2. And I would say probably you know, three or four small incidents. Um, None of which I would consider truly safety, although that, that leaf tornado might have been a safety thing because it was jamming on the brakes for wind. So maybe we'll dock that in the video. Oh, I see what it's trying to do here. It's already wrong. This is a navigation issue, but I can already tell it's going to navigate me in a weird way and force me to tell... I assume it's going to force me to take over. However, if there is a chance that stupid thing getting in the right lane, I wondered if there's a chance it would see the access to the store and take it, uh, like the opening to the parking lot. But I don't think it is. So this is something that. Yeah, I love full self-driving. I love a lot of the commentators that do this, but like, I don't think they point things out like this. Like, you, this car up here is going left. We can go left in the Walgreens right now. That's where I need to go. It's not doing that. Number one, it's ooh, <laughs> completely navigating it. It's going into a Sheets parking lot as opposed to, uh, I think it intended to go on the next street and go around the loop. And it seems to have corrected that. Now, if it's smart, it'll go out at the stop sign, make a right, and go straight, and not do all of this looping. No, it's not going to do that. Okay. We are disengaging for very bad, uh, very bad navigation. Definitely something Tesla needs to improve. And I'll go ahead and keep control for now. Just... So we can get where we're going because I don't trust the navigation at this point. Unfortunately, that also means we can't do the drive through. Maybe I'll order Starbucks or something. Anyway, this is the left hand turn. We made a right in there at the Wawa. All we had to do was turn left in here, and um, it does not know how to navigate there. 